Hey everybody, welcome back. We're gonna finish up the male reproductive system and get into the female reproductive system now. All right, so um, we left off on the penis. The penis is the male organ of copulation. It has three different um, chambers of smooth muscle. We have two chambers called the corpora ca cavernosa and one layer called the corpora or corpus spongiosum. Um, the corpus spongiosum surrounds the urethra. Um, the three smooth muscle layers, when they get filled with blood, they're called engorged, and this is when you have an erect penis um, during um, arousal. Um, when it's not engorged, that's termed, or then the penis is flaccid or non-erect anymore, okay? Surrounding the tip of the penis, so the tip of the penis is known as the glans penis. Um, surrounding the tip of the penis is a covering known as the prepuce um, or foreskin. So this prepuce actually can um, add to male arousal and can help pr with protecting the penis. But um, in the U.S. and in many countries, I, I won't say just the U.S., but in the U.S., a surgical removal of the foreskin is typically um, occurs like the day after birth, and that is known as circumcision. Now, if you go to a different country, circumcision is not always um, it's not a mandatory thing and it's not something that is just common. And so you might have to wait um, up to two weeks before you can actually have your child circumcised. Um, and basically when they circumcise, they're just going to use, um, they're going to cut off that surrounding skin, that foreskin or prepuce. And um, this, opens up the urethra, so it's much easier to see, um, and you're less likely to have infections as you get older. If you have the foreskin, you just have to make sure that when you're cleaning your penis, that you pull the foreskin back so that you're getting everything very cleaned. Um, and that's one of the problems with foreskin is that um, people don't clean it properly. And we are done with the male reproductive system. Oh, I lied. We're not. We're going to talk quickly about testosterone. We're, we're done with the male organs. Now we're going to talk about testosterone and what testosterone is. Testosterone is a male androgen. Um, both males and females have testosterone, but females have very little testosterone compared to males. Um, testosterone stimulates the production of the male duct system during pregnancy. So females and males um, prior to week six are identical um, in pregnancy, I should say. Um, it's not until testosterone is secreted that um, the female duct system degenerates and the male duct system is produced. Um, in childhood, there is little testosterone in the system, but the testosterone um, increases in amount as you hit puberty. And um, once you have a certain amount of testosterone in your system, that's going to stimulate um, sperm production as well as secondary sexual characteristics that you see. Um, regulation of testosterone occurs via negative feedback. Now we're going into the female reproductive system. So the female reproductive system includes the ovaries, which are the organ of reproduction or the organ of um, the primary organ of the reproductive system. That's what I wanted to say, um, where eggs are produced and estrogen is produced. Um, then we have our duct system, which includes the fallopian tubes. Um, the vaginal canal. Um, we have the uterus, which is 
um, the house for the growing embryo slash fetus, the vaginal canal, which is the organ of copulation, but it's also the birth canal. We have the vulva, which includes all of the external genitalia um, for females. And then we have the breasts. Um, the function of the female reproductive system. Of course, we need to produce our eggs. We have to, we um, hold the site of fertilization. So sperm move into the female and they move up to the um, fallopian tubes where fertilization occurs. Um, we are, we hold the um, house for the growing embryo and fetus, that's the uterus, and then also we feed the newborn baby via breast milk. So females have a lot of, uh, a lot of jobs associated with the reproductive system. Males produce the sperm and have to deliver it. Females have to do everything else. So it seems kind of on the unfair side there, right? Um, let's look at the female um, external genitalia or the vulva. So um, females have a little bit more going on in the genital region. We have a labia major. This, this figure actually came from the McKinley Anatomy and Physiology textbook. Um, I didn't like the picture that I had, so I just used this because you can see it better. So we have a labia major. The labia major um, does have hair covering it. Um, the labia major is um, homologous to the male scrotum, um, contains a lot of sweat and sebaceous glands that help um, during intercourse to lubricate the environment. Um, the labia minor then is the inner folds. So you have labia major and then you have a labia minor, which has no hair. Sorry, I'm so sorry, I hit the button. Um, labia minor then contains um, more sebaceous glands and um, that protect the urethral opening. Um, and they have melanocytes, which make the skin color a little bit darker there. Um, between the labia minor and the vaginal canal is called the vestibule. So this entire structure here is the vestibule. Um, it contains the vaginal and the urethral op openings. Um, with Within this region, we have Bartholin's glands. These are homologous to the bulbourethral glands. Um, they secrete mucus to increase in um, protection during intercourse, help in lubrication um, as the penis enters, so that it's not it doesn't hurt. Um, the female has a clitoris which is homologous to the penis in the male. The clitoris um, has a shaft. Um, that clitoral shaft is composed of the same um, corpora cavernosa smooth muscle, which is erectile tissue. And so when females um, are aroused, this engorges and gets larger. The vagina then is the organ of copulation. I mentioned that. It's also the birth canal and it's a passageway for menstruation. The vagina has a partial membrane known as the hymen. So you can see that right here. Um, a lot of people have used the hymen as a source to determine if a female has ever had intercourse. The problem is the hymen can be ruptured through multiple things. Um, intercourse is one. Um, exercise, um, birth. If you, um, if a female puts her fingers in her vaginal canal, that can rupture that hymen. I mean, so there's a lot of reasons for that hymen to be ruptured, which means you can't assume that a ruptured hymen means that the female has had intercourse.
The vaginal canal also has its own microbial ecosystem, and it's a very important ecosystem. It needs to stay maintained. Um, one of the most common bacteria there are called lactobacillus, which produce a lactic acid, which maintains the vaginal canal at about a pH of 4.5. This kills most microbes. It also kills sperm, but that's the job. That's the job of this. If we change that microbial ecosystem, then we're going to be more prone to infections. Um, and the reason I talk about this is because in the past, females have thought that it was a good idea to clean their vaginal canal using different types of um, cleaners like douches. Um, and we know that that's not something that you want to do. Just letting the microbial ecosystem take care of itself is the best way to keep it um, healthy. All right, I'm going to stop here because it's been 11 minutes, and we'll get into the ovaries in our next video. Bye.